Hello, welcome to a uh, tutorial video for Bio30 uh, Lesson 3.6.3. .3. Today we're going to be talking about some exceptions to Mendel. Last day we talked about Mendel's uh, laws of uh, genetics and uh, talked about dominance and recessive characteristics. But that is not always the case. Things are not always that easy. Uh, the general outcome that we're looking at is uh, students will explain basic rules and processes associated with transmission of genetic characteristics. Um, specific outcomes, students will be able to compare ratios and probability of genotypes, phenotypes for dominant, recessive, multiple uh, alleles and completely dominant, co-dominant alleles. Explain the relationship between variability and the number of genes controlling a trait. Um, also, compare the pattern of inheritance produced on genes uh, on sex chromosomes uh, to produced uh, to that produced by genes on autosomes as invest by, investigated by Morgan and others. Okay, so multiple alleles, we're going to talk about that. Uh, many traits have more than one set of alleles. Okay, uh, so fruit flies can have different eye colors. Uh, red, apricot, honey, white, okay, and um, you know there's kind of a hierarchy of dominance there. Red is dominant to apricot, which is dominant to honey, which is dominant to white. Uh, now, capital letters and superscripts are used to express these different genes and their combinations. Um, so that would be like polygenic, if there's more than one set of alleles that are. Um, connected to one trait. Um, now, incomplete dominance. This is when two genes are equally dominant and they interact to produce a new phenotype which resembles neither purebred parent, but rather possesses an intermediate phenotype between the two. So there's really neither a dominant nor a recessive trait. Okay. So here you could see... Um, Incomplete dominance is like if you've got the yellow and the blue uh, together and it produces the green, the intermediate. Now, you can also have codominance where both uh, traits are expressed at the same time. So that's where you have, if you have yellow and blue together, then you get yellow and blue stripes, something like that. Okay. Um, now, a codominance example would be with uh, cattle. So if you've got a dominant colored bull and a white cow, then you can end up with uh, roan cattle. So this would mean that both white and red hairs are distributed, you know, throughout and produce the, the roan kind of color. And the, you know, notice that in these cases of codominance, your alleles are both capital and you're using both letters, okay? And um, if you cross the, the F1s, then you would start to see, you know, red, white, and roan being expressed in that F2 uh, generation. So intermediate uh, or incomplete dominance, same type of thing here where you end up with... Uh, an intermediate color so you don't have like red and white um, both being exhibited you've got the blended characteristic which gives you the pink okay now some examples in human beings of intermediate uh, would be like blood types because a and b are antigens on the surface of the red blood cell and therefore you can have um, you know, different combinations of these antigens. They're both going to be expressed. Okay, so um, I'd actually call it more of a, a codominance situation because you have both of them being expressed. So you have the A antigen being produced and the B antigen if both are, are present. And then you would have, uh, you know, no antigens would be a, an O blood type. So you can have blood type A with A antigens, blood type B with B antigens, or AB with both antigens, 
and um, O if there's no antigens. Um, now on top of that, you can have RH factor, uh, but we're not talking about that specifically uh, today. And I guess with blood type, a universal donor would be blood type O because it has no antigens and therefore, um, you know, there'd be no antibodies. Uh, well, it would have no antigens, but it would have antibodies against A and B. So a universal donor can only receive from blood type O. Now a universal recipient would be blood type AB because it has no antibodies, but it would have both A and B uh, antigens. Okay, and there's a chart there that um, shows antigens present in the blood. So if you had, uh, you know, a genotype of AA, then you would have blood type A, or even AO is still blood type A. Um, B, so in, in this case, you do have uh, blood type O being recessive uh, because it has no antigens, period. So it would be recessive to A and B as far as phenotype expressed. Um, but A and B could be considered co-dominant. Okay, so pedigree analysis, many human traits that run in families do not show a simple Mendelian pattern of inheritance because they're influenced by more than one gene. So single gene traits are rare. And if a mutation occurs, the abnormalities can be disabling or life-threatening. Uh, studying family genetic histories or pedigrees gives insight to how mutant genes causing abnormalities are inherited. So here's some examples. Uh, thalassemia is a disease uh, on chromosome 16 or 11 that results in the reduced amount of hemoglobin, anemia, blood spleen. Now you don't have to remember, um, you know, all of these different uh, diseases, but these, it's good to know some examples of uh, recessive allele um, conditions, sickle cell anemia, that's a good one to know, cystic fibrosis, um, but also you can have Tay-Sachs disease, phenylketonuria, albinism, and um, you know it influences different amount like uh, Thalassemia is pretty common, really, one in 10 in parts of, of Italy. And then you get to sickle cell, one in 625. Cystic fibrosis, one in 2,000 Caucasians. Tay-Sachs, one in 3,000 Eastern European Jews. Uh, PKU, one in 10,000, so it gets pretty rare. And then albinism, one in 10,000. Um, a couple other ones, hypercholesterolemia, emia. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a bad one. One in 120 French Canadians, yipes. That's pretty common. Huntington disease, that's a terrible disease. Um, one in 25,000 Caucasians. And uh, that one's uh, fatal. Okay, now, but, now these ones though, are caused by dominant allele. So that's different. So these ones are caused by a recessive allele. Uh, so you would need two of these alleles to be affected. But here, you would need the dominant allele. Um, and so, you know, if you got even one of these alleles from a parent, then uh, that would be a bad deal. Okay, now just some pedigree analysis symbols. Circles are females, squares are males. Unknown is, is uh, diamond. Uh, dead would be with a line through it. Marriage is a line connecting. And then underneath, if there's a marriage, then you'll see uh, the offspring, uh, which would be s um, siblings. You can have fraternal twins shown, uh, you know, with the splitting line like this, or identical twins. Uh, shaded means affected, 
unshaded means unaffected by whatever condition or disease you're talking about. Okay, and then the generations you'll see at the top would be the first generation, and then the second generation be underneath, third, fourth, going down. Okay, and here you can see, um, you know, there's affected individuals in the fourth generation, uh, individuals two and four in that generation. Now, general characteristics of recessive traits, most affected individuals have two uh, normal heterozygous parents um, that don't have the disease but carry it, and therefore you can have carriers. And F2 of affected individuals have recessive trait. Uh, both genders are affected equally, if you're talking about autosomal disorders, and the family pattern of uh, people showing the trait is horizontal. Recessive trait can skip a generation. Okay. So here'd be an example of recessive trait pedigree. And this one's um, in connection with cystic fibrosis in particular. You can see, you know, it can skip generations in the first one. And then the fifth generation, you get an affected individual. So that probably means that individuals in generation five, one, and two were heterozygous for the trait they were carriers and you know individual four got uh, you know a, a double dose of the recessive allele and therefore had the disorder okay um and looking at pedigrees you might be asked you know um are individuals in generation five one and two uh homozygous heterozygous for this trait, and you'd have to say, okay, based on this, that they must have been heterozygous. Okay, now, general characteristics of dominant traits. Normal allele is recessive. Abnormal is dominant. Um, so the dominant mutant alleles are expressed in a heterozygote. So this is talking about dominant disorders. And the mutant gene will be transmitted one half of the F1 generation. Okay, because you got a 50-50 chance of getting that dominant allele. And if you get it, then you have the disorder. Um, dominant disease will result if abnormal alleles are present in heterozygotes. Dominant traits uh, do not usually skip a generation. So then you'll see them uh, happening in every generation if there's enough offspring. Okay, if there's only one offspring and you had to... 50-50 chance and you have to get lucky and not get the disorder, well, then it could skip that generation. Um, and then it wouldn't be in the next generation because there'd be no gene to pass on to that next one. Okay. Um, to find individuals homozygous for dominant disease disorders is very uncommon. So here would be an example of a dominant trait pedigree. So here you've got, uh, you know, the unaffected ones. But in the first generation, uh, affected an individual, and then it passed it on. You can see one half the offspring did end up getting it. And then one out of four got it in uh, generation three from the one a couple. And then, you know, two out of four from the next couple. Okay. And then you get down to next generation, and you have, uh, you know, more individuals ending up with it. And this is uh, an example of Huntington's disease. Okay. Um, yeah, and just being able to look at these, these pedigrees and know what they mean is... Uh, important now there's a little bit of a, a key for what things mean in your data booklet but uh, having an idea of, of what those things uh, indicate is a good idea albinism is an example of recessive disease uh, where the body doesn't produce pigment of melanin and there's an example of, of that kind of pedigree the albino mates with homozygous uh, then 
the F1 will be carriers in a skip generation. Cystic fibrosis is again recessive type of uh, disorder. Okay, and it can result in uh, you know some very serious type of uh, symptoms. Okay. Sickle cell anemia, that's another recessive type of disorder. And uh, it can result in the abnormally shaped red blood cells, which um, can tend to get clogged in arteries and, and cause problems. Vaso vaso occlusions is what it's called when it clots arteries up. Uh, but it does have the benefit of, of giving some resistance to uh, malaria. Huntington's disease, dominant disease, that um, results basically in the deterioration of your nervous system and uh, progressive death of nerve cells. And so uh, you will, you know, die eventually from that disorder. Now there's also autosomal versus sex-linked traits. So the human genome consists of 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs, and 22 pairs of autosomes, one pair of sex chromosomes. So an autosomal trait means a trait that comes from genes that are non-sex chromosomes. Okay, so one to 22, so to speak. But sex-linked trait is one that's on that 23rd pair, the sex chromosomes. And that concludes uh, this tutorial.